Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. But I'm also telling you if you want your life to change. Does anybody want their life to change? You can literally rip the devil to shreds. Just through the power of being thankful. I started feeling like God wanted me to teach here on having a thankful attitude. So we can't talk about being thankful if we don't also talk about complaining. The C word. <laughs> and grumbling. And fault finding. And I know none of you do that. <laughs> but if you want to buy the CD tonight, you can order a copy of it and give it to all your grouchy friends. <laughs> but I want to say this, and I'm not just saying this to be saying it. I believe that what you hear tonight, if you really take it into your life and you put it to work in your everyday life, I believe it has the power to change your life. Amen. The Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness trying to make what the Bible says was an 11-day journey. Now, that's really pretty dumb. But which one of us can't say, been there, done that? <laughs> and one of their big problems was they kept murmuring and complaining. Instead of being thankful, they complained a lot. And if we can only be thankful when we've got everything we want, then we don't even begin to know anything about having Christ-like character. Anybody, even a, even a sinner that doesn't know a thing about God can be thankful when everything's going their way. So the big thing for us is to learn how to be just as thankful when things aren't going good as we are when things are going good because even when things are not going good in our life, we still have hope and we know that there's nothing that God can't fix. So we don't wait till it's fixed to start being thankful. We start thanking God in the middle of our mess. We find something else in our life that is working. We find some body part that does feel okay. We find something our spouse is doing right. We find something about our job that we can endure and be happy about. Amen? There's always something to be happy about. I said there's always something. Do you have any idea how much complaining goes up out of this land every day about the circumstances in America? And yet things just keep getting worse. What if everybody replaced all those complaints with finding something to be thankful for, as well as praying for the problems, I bet God could work things out a whole lot quicker. We can't just, we cannot just talk about the problems in our life if we ever want them to be solved. Now, let me say something from the get-go. I know there's people in here tonight that you are really hurting, really hurting. I mean, Pastor Mike came and told me that there's a lady here that, who lost her daughter. She was killed in a car accident here in Phoenix two weeks ago. And here she is now two weeks later sitting here ready to receive the word. I tell you what, I admire that. And I can tell you that's somebody that will have victory in her life. And she's only really been studying the word like six months. She started watching our TV program about six months ago, and she said things started so radically changing inside her that she had enough common sense to know when she had this tragedy, the place to go was to God's house and to God's word. All right, we are going to look at a lot of scriptures. I sat and looked every one of these up before I came over here tonight, even though I could probably quote most of them. Because I love just looking at the scripture. I think there's something about just 
seeing it that affects us. So 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. But if one loves God truly, everybody say truly, <laughs> with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessings, he is known by God, recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love, and he is owned by him. So he's saying true love for God is not just going to church on a weekly basis. It's not just saying, I love God. But one who truly loves God is going to have affectionate reverence, a reverent attitude toward God, an honoring attitude toward God. I prayed tonight that as I preached that there would be great respect for the Word of God. We need to show reverence for the Word of God. That's part of loving God is being reverent about what He's given us. Prompt obedience and thankful recognition of all of his blessings. Now, so everybody say, I love God. <laughs> so therefore, I am very thankful. First Thessalonians 5, 18. Thank God in everything. <laughs> in everything. So let me just stop and ask, what's going on in your life that you have been murmuring about and you haven't once taken the time in that situation to say, well, God, this is happening and this is not fun and this hurts, but here's 10 things I'm thankful for. Nobody needed that, okay? <laughs> Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be, be thankful and give thanks. And this is something that I want to press tonight is the giving of thanks. I think if I said, how many of you are thankful? You'd all put your hand up. I'm thankful. But you know what I'm learning? Being thankful and giving thanks is two entirely different things. And we not only need to give thanks to God, but we need to thank people that are in our lives that are a blessing to us. Don't take people for granted. Do you know how many divorces could be eliminated if people in their homes were just using good manners within the family? No, maybe this section would like that. <laughs> Amen, I, I see you guys up there. And we've even got spies over in that overflow room, so just, <laughs> I'll have them give me a report on how you acted while I was preaching. <laughs> just being thankful. 76 times in the Bible it says give thanks. So be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Now, you know, everybody wants to know what God's will is for them. Well, what is God's will? What does he want me to do? And you know what? I think sometimes we just need to do what we can see. And then God will reveal the rest of it to us. I mean, I mean that. I think if, if you don't know what it is that God wants you to do or what he wants you to do about a certain situation, do, do what you know to do to pray about it and then just stay busy Serving the Lord with gladness, being a thankful person, loving God, being a blessing to people. And when God wants to tell you something, you will hear him. He, ha he has no problem making himself known when he wants to. Now, this scripture that we all get pretty excited about, Romans 8, 28, it is a great scripture, but I want to give you a little more insight on it. We are sure to know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God. And if we love God, we're going to be what? Thankful, right? Let's all be in agreement. Thankful, all right. 
are fitting into a plan far good to and for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So here's what I think. We have a very difficult situation. Something's happened that's really hurt us. Life has been lousy. We, we've had a great loss. We've had a great injustice. Somebody has rejected us. Somebody has hurt us. Okay. So this is one of these situations where I'm supposed to be giving thanks, even though I feel like I can't hardly stand to breathe. I think in the midst of that, if you find other things to be thankful for, that's what God uses. Come on now, I said that's what God uses to take all of those things and then cause them eventually, somehow, miraculously to work out for good. And that doesn't mean that the painful thing that happened to you was ever good, but it means that God can make it work out for good. And I don't know how God does that, but I know that even though I was abused as a child and had a very lousy start in life, never got to really be a child, don't ever remember being happy until I was in my 20s, did not ever get to have any fun, got in trouble for laughing as a child. I mean, I had a really bad beginning, and I was getting nowhere as long as I was grumbling and murmuring and complaining and feeling sorry for myself and being mad at everybody who had a good life. It was only when I started finding things to be thankful for. You know what? When God asked me to start taking care of my mom and dad as they got older, I mean, I thought that was just about the most unfair thing that God could possibly ask me to do. You have got to be kidding. And this is what I said. What did they ever do for me? And you know what I heard in my spirit? You're breathing, aren't you? I mean, they had me. And so here I am, you know. Didn't have a good beginning, but I'm having a good finish. It's not too late for you. No matter what kind of a lousy beginning you had or how lousy life is right now, you can still have a great finish. And there's more than one thing that God will lead you to do. But I am telling you, if you don't start being thankful, I mean on purpose, aggressively thankful for the things that God is doing for you. And God is doing good things for everybody, even people who don't know him. He's to, the sun shines on the wicked and the good, on the just and the unjust. This is the part of this I'm wanting somebody to get. I feel in my spirit that if somebody can just get this, you've had a lot of bad stuff happen to you. You've been negative. You're almost afraid to believe that good things are going to happen because you don't want to be disappointed. That's exactly where I was at. When Dave and I had only been married a few weeks, he looked at me one day and said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> See, we only had five dates and got married. It had to happen quick before he figured out what he was getting. <laughs> there was no, like, long courtship. That wasn't going to work. <laughs> I mean, he had no idea what he was getting into. No idea at all. And I didn't even know what love was. I, you know, didn't have any idea. And I looked at him and I said, well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you won't be disappointed when it don't. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, if that's your attitude, I get it. I understand. But I'm also telling you, if you want your life to change, <laughs> does anybody want their life to change? You can literally rip the devil to shreds just through the power of being thankful. Listen to this. This is out of a book called Soul Keeping by John Ortberg. Training for gratitude. In Jesus' day, Every devout Israelite would pray what was called the 18 benedictions. 
And there's that root word again, Benny, meaning good, and diction, meaning words and speech. So good speech. A benediction was good words. In Hebrew, a benediction was any prayer that began with the word bless. In the morning when they woke up, they would pray 18 times, blessed are you, God. 18 times. At noon, they stopped and prayed 18 times, blessed are you, God. At night, they prayed 18 times, blessed are you, God. And on the Sabbath, they added in a fourth one, blessed are you, God. Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed and gave thanks to God. And even when the law came out that if anybody doubt, bowed down to any God except the king, they were going to be put in the lion's den. He still, and I love what the Bible says, he still, as was his custom. Amen. See, that's why I'm saying maybe we just need to form some new habits. And, and maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to set an alarm and every hour stop and give thanks. Or three times a day, stop and give thanks. You know, we can form good habits, and it's amazing how the bad habits have no room to work in our life just by forming good habits. Instead of trying not to complain, why don't you just increase your gratitude and thanksgiving? And I love what it says in Daniel 16. Three times a day, Daniel bowed down as was his custom with his windows open. He didn't even become a sneaky grateful giver <laughs> because he was afraid of the king. He knew the power of gratitude. And sure enough, he slept all night in the lion's den. Came out the next day unharmed. We have added power to our lives as we become grateful. If you want to increase the anointing on your life, be thankful. If you want to increase the anointing on your church, just encourage everybody in it to get thankful because gratitude adds power and complaining adds weakness to our lives. Amen? Psalm 34, the first three verses. I can't believe that we don't all need this. Please encourage me. Does anybody need this? Yeah. <laughs> I love to preach this stuff because it just makes me better. And besides that, everybody I travel with now, if I even so much as sigh, <laughs> they'll... Matter of fact, I read a lot by a woman named Madame Guyon who lived in the 16th, 1600s, and she said, even a sigh is still saying we're not satisfied with what God's doing in our lives. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My, my life makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Who should be glad? The afflicted. <laughs> Come on, we don't want to miss that. Let the humble and the afflicted be glad. Let the afflicted be glad. <laughs> Let the mistreated be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Now, let's go back for a few minutes to this thing about all things working out for good. I mean, of course, I can, you know, I can tell you my story and just quickly say that, you know, how could anybody in their right mind stand and say, I'm not even really sorry that what happened to me happened now? I can't explain it, but I know that some way, somehow, my life is better because of it. I know that. I know that. I don't think if I would have had this great beginning in life and just been treated like Pollyanna, I don't think my life would be as good now 
as it is. I don't think I would know God as well. I don't think I would have as the depth of relationship that I have with him. I don't know that I'd be helping as many people. Let me tell you something. You can turn your pain into somebody else's gain. Your mess can become your message. I mean that. But we, got it. we, we just got a couple stories here. One of the men that works for us, he's been with us about 17 years, and he'd been in his house about 14 years, and he said his house had gone through three kids and two dogs, and it was in definite need of some serious repair. You know, like painting, and he needed a new furnace, he needed a new roof, just a lot of different things, and he just didn't have the money for all that. And he was concerned about it, but he finally just decided to cast his care on God and say, well, God, I don't know what to do about this, so I'm just going to have to trust you. How many of you know that that's what the Bible says to do? When you can't do anything about your problem, then you cast your care on God. And I might add, go ahead being thankful for the things that are working in your life. And um, so lo and behold, one day at work, he gets a phone call from his wife. The house is on fire. So pretty much the whole, the second floor burned up. And I mean, it was just really a big mess. And so, you know, your first impulse is to, you know, I don't understand. His wife said, you know what? It's just stuff. We're just going to stay happy and God's going to take care of this. And so several times, you know, they'd have to encourage us. You know, okay, it's just stuff. We're just going to stay happy and God's going to take care of this. Well, now fast forward to now and they got enough money from the insurance company to fix all the stuff from the fire, to fix all the things that they needed to repair, and they had money left over. <laughs> Go figure. But I don't know. You know, maybe the adjuster that came and looked at their house, maybe if they would have been grumbling and complaining and murmuring, maybe God wouldn't have given them that much favor. I mean, let me tell you, God can do things in our life and our circumstances if we're cooperating with his way of being blessed. Do I need to say it again? God can do supernatural things in our circumstances. All it takes is for God to give you a little bit of favor. Just a little bit of favor. And things can change dramatically. Well, we're not going to increase the favor in our life through griping. And murmuring, remember, why waste our time doing something that doesn't do any good? I would like you to make it your goal to live with a grateful heart. See every good thing that God has done in your life. Philippians 4, 6 in the Message Bible is an interesting translation. It reads, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. hacía escondida de todo, pero yo con 13 años lo pillé. También escuchaba cómo a veces él le pegaba. Entonces, eh, si bien mi mamá siempre trató de mantener la familia como en secreto, esas cosas, que, no, que era fea, que, no, que nadie me pescaba, que no había esperanza en mí, que mis manos eran feas, mi cara. Me miraba al espejo y lloraba. Dos veces traté de ahorcarme.
Well, at Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, we are honored to work alongside Teen Challenge to help people break the chains of addiction and to see all that God has created them to be. Patricia and Norbert, would you begin by telling us about the need for a home like this here in Chile? Well, we have uh, the situation with uh, the women growing up in atmospheres where men abuse them. And through that abuse, women are turning to drugs like never before. The men beat them up, they turn them into slaves, they make them do the drug runs. And so they are afraid to, st to step out. They are afraid to go back to their families. It's a nine to 12 month program. We have a curriculum that gives them step-by-step -step discipleship in which they can grow in Christ. Once they're mature enough, they are reunited with their children. And when they live that dream of being free from drugs and being free from those things that cause them to turn to drugs, then they can be the mother that they need to be. Humana, you are such an important part of all of these women's stories because of the way that you play a huge role in their healing. What are some of the particular troubles that women are dealing with? La necesidad de amor, del abrazo familiar, del abrazo de alguien que te ama, lo que buscan, lo que necesitan lo que transforma, porque mis manos eh, son instrumentos de Dios. Y esta es mi familia, ellas son mis hijas. Cuando supe que Él me perdonó, a pesar de que le hacía daño también a la gente al vender droga, eso me, me sentí súper porque alguien me amaba. <laughs> you said before that you couldn't even stand to look in a mirror because of how ugly you felt. What do you see now? When I'm working, many people come to me and say, Oh, your smile, you have something special. A ver, que it's special. And one day I stopped and looked in the mirror, but I looked at my eyes. And he said, I did this. Y era mi rostro. What an amazing privilege to see the way that these women are blooming, the way that the beauty that God has put in them is now coming out so that they can see it. And when you help a woman, it flows over into her children, into her families, and it changes so many lives. That is what Project Girl is all about, sharing the beauty and you can do that with us right here in Chile as we've been talking about and in many, many places all over the world. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen, maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce, met haar levensverhaal, met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebrochure en bel 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.